Hey folks, thanks for joining me at the Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show for 2021. And wow, you should see these boats here on display. They always amaze me. If you love boats and the ocean, then this place will put a huge smile on your face as well. The show is massive with seemingly endless boats and engines on show. My name is Ron. And in this video, I'll do three things. One is to tell you how I navigated this event as efficiently as I could, maybe offering some tips along the way that you might find useful if you come out in 2022. Two, of course, I'll show you the videos and photos of some of these boats and engines for 2021. And at the end, I have a quick story about the Trinidad and Tobago Powerboat Great Race and the first American to win that race. Do you know who he is and what boat he throttled? Hint, stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. I've always wanted to say that. Let's go. Show spans a lot of acreage right on the waterfront at Fort Lauderdale Beach area. The organizers have done a really good job in their planning. This year I downloaded and used the free Flibs app for smartphones. That's F-L-I-B-S. To get the most out of your visit, be sure to review the info on the app or the website very carefully to get all that information and the good stuff that you need to visit and see when you get here. You'll find great value for your entry fee here. Oh, and make sure you wear really comfy shoes because you're going to be doing a lot of walking. The Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show happens every year around the last weekend in October and the general public of all ages are welcome. Whether you're there to buy a boat or just wander around with the kids admiring the boats. I found that for me, one hectic day is enough to see all that I really needed to. And it gave me enough time even to lust after some of these amazing boats, the designs, the craftsmanship, the new technology, and of course, the plentiful horsepower of these engines on show. Now the show spans from a Wednesday to Sunday, so you'll find that you have lots of days to choose from. I usually check the weather the week before and purchase my tickets online a day or two before the intended date of the visit. That way I don't get rained on, or not very much. Now the first day is usually quieter since it's also midweek and a little bit more expensive, about $20 US. Since I chose one day, I didn't need to stay at any hotel, but if I did, I might look at the Hilton Gallery 1. It's right on the Intracoastal Waterway with really good views. And access to the water taxi is very conveniently located at the front door of this hotel. There's also a cool bar area too. Food and drinks at the event is usually going to be around three times, yes, three times the price that you might see outside of the event. But the drinks really do go down well as you enjoy this view and even the entertainment at the show. Of course, I did some sampling just to be able to report on that for you. Talk about sacrifice, huh? Since I drive down from Palm Beach, I opt to park at the suggested Galleria Mall car park. Last year I used the free bus shuttle service, but this year I opted for the water taxi. It is after all a boat show, so entry via the Intracoastal waterway really was the way to go. And the ticket was less than $13 US. It allowed me unlimited use of the water taxi for the day, and there are also drinks available on board at regular pricing. The captain and the crew are really super folks and they talk about the trip, they talk about the houses, the boats, everything. It's a really a good trip. The reason I chose this parking location is for the reduced lines and that rush to finish up the show and get back to this parking shop part is pretty much a lot lighter than the other parking spots and of course it's free. Now, tickets for the show and the water taxi can be bought online. In fact, it's recommended that you do. You're then sent a QR or barcode, which you simply show at the door on your smartphone or a printed page. And this will give you quick and easy access to the boat, 
what taxi or the show. Now, the only place I saw really long lines was in the evening, getting out of the show and getting back onto the water taxi. So I changed my plan, having written the water taxi a few times during the day, I opted for the bus ride back. And there were actually only three people on my bus at 6.30 p.m. near the end of the show. Lots and lots of room. The Fort Lauderdale International Boat Show has a lot of booths and it displays tackle, fishing tackle, clothing, sunglasses, a wide range of electronics, and the list goes on. Everything for boating is on display here. And being a consumer show, a lot of the products are available for purchase. Now this year, I also noticed that the show hosted many more seminars than last year, which I think added a lot of value based on the topics for attendees. I think it's a welcome bonus. You are seeing value in this video. Please give me a thumbs up right under here. It really helps out the channel and inspires me to make more videos like this. The stuff I mentioned in this video are listed below in the description for your convenience. I love boating and having made the Trinidad Tobago crossing many, many times, it was really a pleasure to meet up with a powerboat racer who has also made that crossing while he raced and he won. As I mentioned earlier, there is that powerboat great race that covers over 80 miles between the islands in the Southern Caribbean of Trinidad and Tobago. The race is over 50 years old and is one of the oldest offshore races. It's also one of the most grueling in the world. Having done that trip many times, I can tell you, you never know what the waters are gonna throw at you when you get out there. Much of this race is out in those open waters. Really true tests for any boats and crew especially when you're doing over 70 miles per hour on that water. Well, while at this show and visiting the cigarette boats, I met up with Phil Lipschutz, the first American to ever win our great race. Phil is the president of the TNT <clears throat> Marine Center in Miami, specializing in cigarette boats. And there is a link below also to his website. We traded stories of that water crossing and how we throttled the Dollar Marine 41-foot Apache during that epic and winning performance in 1989. Yes, I remember. Well, I do hope you enjoyed some of these highlights of the boat show and even maybe gotten some tips to help you out on your visit to your boat show. If you have any questions, drop me a line. I'll be happy to try and offer any help I can. Maybe... I'll even see you for a cold one in 2022.